about going into the game playing tip to horn. And I thought this was uh, one of those games where we played tip to horn in a very um, unique and difficult place to play. We had a lot of fans on top of you. Um, I think our team is continuing to grow, continuing to develop, and we've gotten better since the last time that we played this talented Rutgers team. And just proud of the, the group's belief and fight in each other um, when we step out there on the court. Just a great team effort. Um, you know, Fats and Eric had it going, you know, go for 45 between them. Um, you know, Eric is climbing up in the record books, 200 made threes this game. Just a great win for us and uh, makes for a very nice bus trip back. Yes, Danny, after the way Parker played the first time around, it's pretty obvious that you wanted the team to you task him with shutting him down, basically mirroring him. What, what did you think of what he was able to do just in terms of hassling that role? You know, Akeem is our unsung hero. You know, because you look at our starting lineup and, you, you know, you talk about that, you talk about Eric, Dante, Q, and, and Akeem is a guy who's, he's the stir that, he's the straw that stirs the drink. He's the glue that holds it together. He makes the right play. He makes big shots. He guards. Um, just great understanding and feel for the game. Doesn't get rattled. And, um, came out and, and did a really good job of staying in front of Harper and just trying to be there to contest the shot, you know, and, and I thought he did a good job. Now Harper missed some shots that he normally makes. I mean, he was seven to 16 from the field, which is pretty good percentage, right? But, um, you know, he didn't make any threes this game. And um, he, he let us up from behind three the last time we played. So, you know, Hakeem did a really good job of being there and, and being a, a pesky defender in front of him. Getting the senior backcourt succeed so well there, you know, with every game coming so, so much down the stretch, you know, what do you kind of think, make of having, you know, being able to see them have a game like that where both of them are going off, everything seems to be uh, landing. You know, what do you make of that? You really well, you know, this is one of the few games where we've had two guys go off like this offensively throughout the course of the season. Um, use this one guy going off and then, few other guys are contributing their, their normal averages. So when we get two guys to score like this, you know, we're, we're a dangerous team. And, um, you know, especially when not to single out anybody, but I'm going to for Dante to not score a field goal and to come on the road and get a win here in this environment with the teams that uh, Rutgers have beaten in this building, it's a great win for us. Even how – last time around went to come back and whatnot you guys were able to keep that at double digits all the way through up until the last minute or so how happy were you with the overall defensive performance well i mean you know we've got to clean up a little bit of our late game situations you know we, we got free from us and made some shots um, but do enough to get a win on the road you're always happy you know and especially when you go into it with a cushion that we went into it with, we just have to do a little bit better job of being cleaner with our switches and still contesting shots and finishing each possession with a rebound. But all in all, um, you know, 36 minutes, you know, we, we had to lead. So you, you can't fault too much of that, especially when you're playing on the road. When you look at what Fats has done historically, I think that's about a 28% three-point shooting this year. When he has a night like this, do you feel like this is something that could maybe be a turnaround type of thing for him? Because I know, particularly since Christmas or so, that hasn't really been a big part of it. Um, Fats is a confident young man, and we're confident in him. And, you know, there's any time that guy is open in his range, time, score, momentum, dictates you shoot the shot, you shoot the shot. And, you know, he, he got it going early and, and made some big-time shots for us um, late in the shot clock, late in the shot clock. And, um, you know, Eric just continues to do what Eric does, and that's make tough shots. But, you know, when Fats has it going like that, and then he's able to get to the paint as well, um, just a, a terrific job from him. Going into halftime, scoreline is looking pretty similar to the last time around. You know, what was the message to make sure that this time you weren't giving up that lead? Exactly that. <laughs> you know, just no sugar coating it. We've been here before. Now we got to do a better job of finishing and closing out. Keith, two more. Ryan McFadden. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, um, Q has scored in double figures in back-to-back -back games. I just want to ask, what have you seen from him over these la over these last two games, and how has he developed in from in 
from a confidence standpoint? Q's done a terrific job. Um, the last game, you know, we uh, you know we sell a lot of ball screens to get our guards downhill, and our guards weren't able to finish. But Q was there to to clean it up because the majority of the time, Q's man is contesting the shot because Dante or Akeem or Eric or Fat they get downhill until that five man comes over to contest. Q cleaned up all those shots to start us off the last game. This game, he established himself a great post position got to a spot, elevated up, and made some tough shots and got us off to a terrific start. So, you know, he's he's finding different ways to score the basketball and being really efficient when he gets his touches. And, um, you know, that's, that's something that we can need to see um, continue to happen. Um, not necessarily how you score it in terms of throwing you the ball, but, either, you know, manufacturing points, going and getting offensive rebounds, being active, making himself available when the big fella steps up and – protects the rim like Cliff was doing today. You know, so those are all things that we're all, you know, continuing to get better at as a team. And, and Key was starting to find his footing with that as well. Okay, last question uh, from the Zoom, Bruce Posner. First of all, congrats, Coach. Uh, tonight seemed like a uh, almost a catharsis of this squad. This game, there was from, from gate to wire, there was a never, never a drop-off. Had you sensed that in practice leading up to the, this game after Illinois? And what do you think might have been the cause of the 100% full-time 48-minute performance they gave? First of all, Bruce, you're throwing me off because I don't like that background. I like the other background where I can see Cole Fieldhouse. <laughs> all um, right. But to answer your question, you know, in practice, you know, we've been talking about playing tip to horn. And I thought we came out and we were able to do that for a good 36 minutes today. We made shots. We shared the basketball. But the reason that we made shots is because we, we got into the paint. We had dribble penetration. And we made really good decisions once we got there, making extra passes. And we made some timely shots. So, but, you know, the practices have been going fairly well all year. Our guys have come into practice every day with an attitude of competing and challenging one another. And the energy level is always pretty decent. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.